Well, the civil rights struggle of the 1960s affected many small towns across the nation. The city of Laurel was no exception. The Ku Klux Klan often spewed hate-filled rhetoric, which sometimes escalated to violence. But one researcher has discovered that local incidents could all be traced back to one man, and he was a master at garnering publicity for himself. What I found so interesting was that his need for self-promotion, which goes against the whole nature of the Klan. Francis Edwards first began what researcher Kevin Leonard calls his nonstop self-promotion in May 1966 while addressing a Klan meeting in Camp Springs. It's still, to this day, somewhat a secretive organization. It was very secretive back then, uh, but this guy wanted, he wanted to see himself in the paper. He had some sort of a narcissistic need. Leonard has been researching the former Klansman for years, exposing how he would pull stunts to get publicity. This old video shows him fully robed in Klan gear outside of a Beatles concert at RFK Stadium in the district. As a terror organization, I think we have a terror organization. We have ways and means to stop this if uh, this is going to be the case. Leonard takes us on a tour of some of the old sites where Edwards made his mark. This was a Phillips 66 gas station. This was the uh, Klan headquarters, uh, the Klan organization that was run by Edwards uh, back in 66 and 67, which is when they were in their heyday here, uh, he used to burn crosses here on his property, which back then was not against the law. There were no, no, no there was nothing uh, categorized as a hate crime that just didn't exist. Next door to his gas station and Klan headquarters was a restaurant. This used to be called Allen's Townhouse back in the 60s. Uh, the owner of this place refused service to Edwards and some of his clansmen. They were in full robes. And it kind of escalated where the owner's son was a University of Maryland student, and he called a bunch of his friends, and it ended up being 50 of his friends in a standoff in this parking lot against the, the robed clansmen. Howard County Police monitored the situation, but nothing came of the standoff. Uh, Edwards and his clan had a rally here. Uh, and it was, it was in the newspaper the, prior to the rally, telling everybody it was there, but nobody showed up. There were a lot of onlookers, but few sympathizers when Edwards tried to gather Klan supporters at the intersection of Main Street and Route 1. But he had a bullhorn, and he stood here for about a half an hour, just with racist rants going on, and then he claimed that they were going to march to Washington, D.C. So Edwards and two other Klansmen got a police escort, they started marching down Route 1 with a big American flag. But Klan members never actually marched. Leonard says it was all a hoax. There was an area where the Klan did do some serious damage, though. The year was 1967. Well, this is St. Mark's Church. This is Laurel's oldest black church. It's in the Grove, which is uh, the historic black community for Laurel. And there were four guys who, as an initiation to get into the Klan, they went to Edwards gas station. He gave them a can of gas to try to burn the church down. They got here and they realized that it was a concrete block building that wasn't going to burn. So they turned around and tried to set fire to a house across the street. But luckily, the uh, owner of the house got out and put it out pretty quickly. But it caused quite a commotion here in the Grove. The entire Grove community was barricaded for eight days while Laurel police investigated the incident. Four young men were eventually arrested and sent to prison. And Kevin Leonard's research on this story includes a 250-page FBI file which he received after waiting two years following a Freedom of Information Act request. Now, the file provides evidence of extensive surveillance and investigations of Edwards and the local Klan conducted by Maryland State Police, Laurel Police, and others. Leonard says he has tracked down Edwards, who still lives in the region, but he has refused to talk. If you'd like to learn more on the story, you can contact Kevin Leonard at laurelhistory.com.